So talking about these various different technologies, I'm going to go share my screen again to summarize the differences between all these different products that we're talking about. So going back here, George, if you can give us a little bit of a summary on the various yeah. different technologies that are out there right now. Absolutely. Like, so what, what are the differences between, for example, P mono and N mono offerings, as well as Top Gun and HJT? And maybe right. uh, compare okay. them to Perk and yeah, Perk. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is all things have all been so the the we're always looking for a better way to do things in an industrialized setting. A lot of this stuff has been around for a very long time, but it's really, how do you commercialize these things? So the easiest to commercialize was uh, a polycrystalline product. So that's a, a P a P type polycrystalline product with aluminum backside field. That's what the BSF is for. That's your standard product that has been, was you know made from the seventies up to, you know, the early you know, the mid 2000s, we started moving into monocrystalline products, which is a, a more purified single crystal product wafer in the, you know, in the 2010 timeframe. Um, we also started introducing backside passivation, backside passivation processes. That was the introduction of PERC, which is for a passive emitter rear cell. And then the Follow on to that was PERT, P E R T, uh, passive emitter, uh, rear totally diffused. So, similar products, uh, but what that does is increases the efficiency of the cell by using a backside treatment of the cell. Now, as we got more sophisticated, uh, we moved from P mono to N mono. And the difference there is the, the bulk material is either positive or negative. You've got a P, you have a the bulk material is charged one way, and then you put your PN junction on top of that, and that generates your, that's where you generate your current is across that PN junction. So if your bulk material is doped with a positive dopant, so silicon is a semiconductor, it's neither positive or negative. You can turn it one way or the other based on the uh, dopant or the impurities that you put in it. So if you put a if you put boron in that p in a in a silicon ingot, uh, you'll end up with with positive or p mono. The problem with p mono is that it is subject to light induced degradation. So that's uh, LID, which we've all heard about, but that's your degradation that happens in the first fifty cumulative kilowatt hours of exposure to the sun. And that is caused by boron oxygen defects. So uh, we moved from using boron as a dopant to a negative dopant, which is phosphorus. And now that gives you a N mono product. If there's no boron, there could be no boron oxygen defects, which means there could be no LID, which now you've just got another, you've just gathered another one and a half points of efficiency You've reduced your degradation of your product just by moving over to these, this material system, this N mono. Wow. So now you have your, your N mono product, which is going to be more efficient and is not subject to LID. So now you've gained, you've gained efficiency and you've gained power without having to spend too much money because you can always, you can make super efficient stuff. It just costs lots and lots of money. So the goal is to keep the cost down. So then we started doing backside treatments on our uh, mono products. We introduced uh, PERC and PERT to mono. But a few years back, tunnel oxide, tunnel oxide passivation, so that the rear coating on the back of the cell was done by a tunnel oxide, which is even more efficient than uh, your PERC and PERT. So that's the Topcon technology. That's that's Topcon, and Topcon is is very good, but it still is not changing things. So it's it's a similar, it's a backside treatment. 